sunshine. Today is a special day because I beat my hunting partners to our meeting location. It's just before 5.30 in the morning. And what are we doing? We're going goose hunting. Um, I just came off a two week filming stretch in Western Manitoba, filming for Birdtail Waterfowl. And what's the first thing I do? First thing I wanna film when I get back is a goose hunt, so I'm pretty pumped. I have two guides from Birdtail who, they do part-time seasons there, and um, they're back at home in Winnipeg now, and they said, let's go goose hunting. So, so we're in central Manitoba, going for an early morning goose hunt. It's middle of October, and uh, we're just waiting for them to show up, so. Should be any minute now. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a grizzly bear. That hey, is buddy. Sean Pollock. One second, what's the, what's the key to the hunt? The key to the hunt are how to rate monkey buns. <laughs> Absolutely. So yesterday I had to make a special trip just to make sure that we had how to rate treats for this morning's adventure. Wow. Absolutely. A key to every good hunt, okay. A key to we'll, every good hunt. We'll eat them in the blind, okay? Absolutely, we'll eat them in the Perfect, blind. Monkey you. buns and coffee. And coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we got no wind. Definitely not a hunter's friend. Uh, we want to set up kind of sporadic so that we're having birds back behind us, out to the right, out to the left. I've created a small little pocket, which you probably can't see just yet, but as the day breaks, you'll see just right out in the front, there's a little J-hook that spreads out there. So we're gonna anticipate a lot of the birds that are gonna come from the south. They're gonna come right over. Since there's no wind, they're gonna come right in. We got five minutes to hunting light. Sean, yes, tell sir. me what type of shot we're using today. Well, tell, the, tell, what do you prefer? My preference is for a pure goose field to use the double Bs. If I'm gonna be anywhere else where there are some ducks around, I'll usually go for the twos because I certainly find they'll cover off both those fairly well. But the big thing is just making sure you've got reliable ammunition, reliable firearms. Make sure you take care of your guns because then they'll take care of you. On a day like this, we put in all the effort as far as the scouting, as far as making sure that we have all the permissions lined up. You want to maximize your time out here. So, a couple of tips to live by. Let's Man, have a good morning. You're good on camera. No, these guys are good. If you guys check the Travel Manitoba Master Hunter Minutes, there's a Goose Minute and a Duck Minute hosted by Jay Kuipers and Sean Pollock. These guys are both phenomenal guides and they're going to drop some major knowledge today. So, I'm going to try to teach you guys as much as I can because I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot today. What would you tell a beginner on, on shooting a goose, like on aiming wise, what? Uh, am I aiming for the neck, the base of the neck? You always want to cover his face. Face? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you pull up, you, you come and you start with his body, yeah. and you move your gun up in front, Yeah. and as soon as you pass his head, pull the trigger. You always have to be in constant motion when shooting. If you stop, you're gonna miss that bird. Yeah, that makes sense. So if you keep following through, watch it, watch it, watch it, bang, keep following through and watch and care, keep your gun following that bird as it falls. You'll always get into the good practice of makes sense. having good motion. See? I've been filming birds for three years and I learn something new every day. Gliding in on the deck, Jay. You see in. him? Yeah. Get ready. Pound him! <laughs> Pound him! <laughs> Get him, boys! Get him! Nice. Yeah. That's how we do it. You got double punched. Well guys, a little update. Uh, the birds want to be somewhere else, and that happens sometimes. But uh, we've had a couple decent volleys. Birds are still moving, lots of birds moving still. Just need to trick a couple dumb ones. Oh, yeah. When the hunting's yeah. tough. Hunting's tough. Love of the sticky. This looks good. Oh, some sticky bun. <laughs> mm. Can you give us a little update on the hunt so far? <laughs> Hunt's been awesome. Food's been great. Had some great shooting, great fun with friends. Muddy some boots. Love muddy, muddy oh boots. Oh God, muddy boots, yeah. Love muddy boots. <laughs> it's been warm. Yeah. It's beautiful out here. Well guys, a very big difference that I would make between hunting and fishing is with fishing, if you pick a spot that isn't good, you move. You can keep moving around. With hunting, you pick your spot, 
And if it's waterfowl, you're pretty much there for the morning or the evening. I wouldn't say we're on the key spot, but uh, we're getting some birds. That is a nice greater Canadian goose right there. Good eating. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Not bad. No, absolutely. I know we were talking earlier about uh, some table fare and stuff. And I mean, these birds are obviously huge. They've got a ton of breast meat, but also twofold. One by law, and the second part is by just flavor and taste. Is you also have to remember they got some pretty sizable uh, thighs and so forth. There's nothing better than you cut all these off, slow cook them in a crock pot or something like that. They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But even as it was, the birds that came in here committed beautifully. They set to you know, tight ranges. We were able to make good, clean ethical shots, retrieved every bird we shot. So that really is the makings of a great morning. So thank you to come out with us and enjoy the hunt and also to document it for us. Thank you to Sean. Hey, Jay Thank you to Jay. Jay Kuypers. A lot of J's. Absolutely a lot of J's. The day's not done. I'm going fishing now, and we're gonna bring a couple geese on the boat and do a little cast and blast, because if we don't catch fish, at least we got some geese to eat. So, goose to eat? Goose, Ge gooses? Gooses geese? to eat. I'm not sure. Anyways, we're headed to the boat next. Awesome day, thanks to these guys. Central region is where we're at, but there, there's really geese all over the province. Like, Absolutely Manitoba's fun. a major flyway, and uh, also a major swimway for big, green walleye, so that's what's next. Welcome back to part two of our cast and blast in central Manitoba. We changed co-hosts. Thank you to Jay and Sean for the morning. This afternoon, we got the one and only Josh McFadden. Hi, y'all. From Black Chair Marketing. That's right. He's the man. If you haven't checked him out on social media, I will link him below and you can check him out. Amazing photographer, cook, fisherman, outdoorsman. And he's gonna cook some fish for us on the boat today. That's the plan, right? If we catch some. We got half a day to make it happen around the Red River. It is the fall greenback run, greenback walleyes, something that's special to Manitoba. Anyways, we're gonna get fishing right away and we'll check in with you guys once we're on the water. Boys and girls, welcome to the Red River. In the fall, an influx of giant walleyes come from Lake Winnipeg into this tributary. Our fishing technique will not be the most exciting, but the cooking should hopefully make up for it. And um, we're gonna do jigs and minnows. I'm gonna do kind of a modified uh, setup, basically a jig, foot of line, and then a drop shot hook. And basically it's just, it's like a very fancy pickerel rig essentially. About as basic as it gets, but it catches big fish. So that's what we're doing. One eternity later. Well, hour 37 on the Red River. Still fishless. We'll get him, yeah, bike's picking up. Nothing else, we'll get some good uh, slow-mo of minnows being pulled out of tubs. Rods being jiggled. Close-ups of Josh's facial hair. Ponder. Hmm. We'll get some slow mo ponder. Yeah. Like, do you need the wind? Oh yeah. Down? The wind. The wind should definitely be east. Ooh. Oh, we're on. We that got... seems okay. No. Nope. Ooh. It's okay. That's edible. That's a that is back. edible. We're cooking that one. Beautiful. Is that All a right. greenback or what? That, that is a little tall. sauger. It's a sauger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sauger by the dots on the spine. That's gonna go in the live well, and uh, Josh is gonna prepare that later for us. Beautiful. Eater. Ooh. Are you gonna sling? That's food, we need it. Get get it right in. Boom. Nice, number two. Does he know he's gonna get pan fried? I, 
I hope he has some sort of expectation. Soon to be tacos. So it's just like a thin whole grain pancake made with coffee grounds. Come on, you're killing it, man. What do we got? There Chubby. we go, look how fat that thing is. So this one's a little sketchy, a little gross on the side of some growths. We're probably gonna put them back. Well, we could deep fry those growths. Here we go. On, on. Josh McFadden, it's on. Yeah, woo. Another one. Still looking for that green. No growths on this one. <laughs> no growth, but maybe a little small. Yeah, we'll toss this guy back. Oh, there's a hit. Oh, wow. Ooh, wow. Anything you want to say to the camera after that? Curses. Curses! Right there, Sauger bite is lit. Look at this. I'm being a model for once. Guys, the camera died right before this fish. I can't believe it. It was rolling for the 13 Saugers beforehand. But we got a good green back. First green back of the day, and we still got a couple hours yet, so. We're gonna see what we got here. It's a, it's a big fat fish. This is, this is why you come to the Red River right here. And that is why you come to the Red. That is a nice, big greenback walleye. Look at that, big perky fin, emerald back. That is why they get that name. We're gonna put this in the net, take a quick picture, and this is a little too big to eat, so we're gonna get it back as quick as possible. Okay guys, took some pictures. Awesome fish. I'm guessing it's probably a 25 incher. I'm not sure. We're gonna catch a bigger one. I'm gonna let Josh release it. I'm gonna get a nice little slow-mo shot and uh, we're gonna get back to fishing and then some cooking real soon. Guys, it is the time of the day where I get spoiled by a chef by Chef McFadden. He's not a real chef. Welcome to Josh's kitchen. He likes to cook. So he's gonna show us a couple different dishes, and in the meantime, we're gonna watch our rods and hopefully catch that 30 inch walleye we've been looking for. So here we go. Oh, I got one more thing. So, <laughs> Part two. Right. <laughs> we got so we the, ultimate, the ultimate catch and cook. Tell us about dish number one. Okay, dish number one is going on as we're still watching lines dangling in the water, but we've got four pretty small walleye cheeks here, or pickerel cheeks, or sauger cheeks as they say, and we've got one filet, and this is going to get diced up into around the same size pieces as our cheeks. So ceviche is essentially raw fish, but it gets cooked by the acids that are in lemon juice essentially. So, so we've got, a little bit of lemon zest, which comes from the rind, and we've got lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice, some red onion. Uh, there's a little bit of pepper in there, and I also put a little splash of a Calvados uh, apple brandy. Now you're comes just from getting France. fancy. So I think it'll add a little bit to the flavor, but this is Jay's first time, I think, right? First time eating raw fish? Eating raw fish, doing ceviche. You've had sushi. Yes. So it's similar to sushi, I love but sushi. this is Red River sushi. <laughs> so. In go the cheeks. Those will take a little bit of time to cook and I'm going to slice up this bad boy here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this up into some longer, or sorry, some like just thinner slices here. And is that so it cooks easier? Like it's Yeah, it'll just, the, the acid and the lemon, lemon juice will get, get to it a little faster. The really unique part about this day. We're gonna get some real emotional music here. Yeah, we're gonna get some real emotional music. But the really unique part about this day is that Jay nor myself had any sort of Thanksgiving gatherings up. And so we're giving thanks together in the wilderness. And we're gonna hold hands on camera for a minute. Perfect. And that's all you got. <laughs> all right. So yeah, so this is just gonna get a little bit of a mix up. I can put the lid on that. How many minutes? It won't take long, but we'll leave it in there as we uh, do our thing. Yep. And we'll see how it goes. We got a goose along. Greater Canadian goose. And uh, we're just gonna breast it? I'm gonna do the breast and that's all we're gonna focus on right now. And we'll uh, we'll worry about the legs later. Perfect. We got oil, we're cooking the fish first. Ceviche fish is cooking. Goose is ready to pan fry later, but first we're gonna do fish for fish tacos. In Josh's kitchen. He likes to cook. So to make it a little easier doing tacos on the fly or on the road, you can't really prepare a ton in the boat. So I prepared 
pretty well everything that's going in the taco beforehand. And this is going to be a sweet corn salsa. Um, all I need to really do is add some lime juice. So we're going to do that right away. Well so this is my special mix. It's seasoned with something that's a little more spicy and crunchy. Is it a secret? And it's kind of a secret, but kind of not. Ooh. Let's do this. If you stay long enough, you can have a fish taco. Oh yeah? Does that sound good? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, what's next, boss? Okay, I mean, you can't have a taco without a little avocado. I don't have anything else that rhymes with that, but I feel like that was pretty good. <laughs> and then we have some other toppings like the sour cream. If you're ever going to consider the lightweight sour cream, like don't even bother. Cool. Like a, like a seagull coming closer for the fish tacos. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Man, you can cater for me any day. If you open up a thing of sour cream or yogurt and you don't peel the tin foil all the way off and you leave it half torn or you leave it like flipped up and then put the lid back on and put it back in the fridge, you did it wrong. So now it's a little bit toasted. We're gonna take a little bit of the sour cream, a little bit. We're gonna take a lot bit of the sour cream, put it on there. We're gonna get a little bit of avocado on that taco. That's a lot of avocado. I'm just gonna go back to one piece. <laughs> We're gonna lay the fish on there ever so nicely. And then we're gonna load it up with this corn salsa that we have going on here. Unreal. And, and that's what we, we got. Call, McFadden's fish tacos. Pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty straightforward, but it's gonna taste. Uh, the prep is key, I would say, if you're gonna key. do it in the boat or camping anywhere, right? So while this thing is still hot, I'm going to film Jay taking his first bite. Oh boy. Hey, is it slow-mo? Yeah, this is in slow-mo. Super slow. <laughs> no, okay? Good. That lime is amazing. All right, this was the first one that we finished and uh, the tacos were incredible. A little ceviche. Cheers. Three, two, one, cheers. Get a little more of that texture. Yeah. But it just tastes fresh, right? Like it's something vibrant. You get that. It's a little chewier. Yeah, a little more chewy. You get that lemon flavor. But. I it's not gross, like when you think of raw fish. But imagine that like on a cracker or on a yeah. piece of toast or something. Amazing. Really good. So we won't stuff our faces with that. Let's Here's call our buddy. Hey buddy. All right, what's your name again, sorry? Dan. Dan, I'm Josh. Yeah, I think I've uh, chatted with you before too. Okay, well that's great. Thank you. Cheers. Kind of gives a whole new meaning to uh, going out to catch dinner. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Just drive through. We got one more for you. Oh my God. They're good, eh? That's so good. Hey, nice meeting you. Hey, sounds good. Enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> right on. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Have a good one. Have a good one. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Showing other people love. Perfect. You know? Well, ceviche was a success. I, I liked it more than I expected. But our last and final installment of cooking goose breast and goose heart, which I'm a little nervous about, but I'm going to do it because I trust Josh. But anyways, cooking the goose, I like to just season it pretty simple. Cooking it in butter is great. Um, we'll end up doing, uh, yeah, simple salt and pepper on the surface. Cook it until it's just cooked through. It'll still be nice and juicy and tender in the middle. And we'll do the heart the same way. And Jay's gonna try, I'm gonna try. goose heart for the first time. That's the heart, right there. <laughs> and that is breath. Oh dude, that's so good. You guys will add a little bit of cold butter into this liquid. You can see the liquid, like it's a little cloudy, but it's also a little clear. Yeah. But we add some butter to it and just mix it around once it's off the heat. And it kind of turns it a little more silky and into yeah. a little bit more of a sauce. I'm learning lots. Look at that. This is fantastic. Put that chunk on the board. Cut it against the grain a little bit. So good. That was just salt and pepper and lime. It's toasted salt and pepper. And it's gray sea salt, which is... It's, it's, everything's good. It's a little more special. Jay still needs to try the goose heart. So... Oh man, I'm nervous. Cut into it here and see what it looks like. Oh no, it's perfect. Perfect. I know it's fine, but just in my head it's so different. But try this piece. Okay. So that's the end piece. Okay. Here, film me. It tasted like crane. It tasted, it tasted like a really good cut. Yeah, I could, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was good. Once I get past the psychological part of eating the goose heart, like that's good. 
That's that was best. good. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. I have some amazing friends that took me out and, uh, you know, taught me a bunch today. And um, I think that's it. I don't know what else there is to say. Make sure you're following all these guys on social media. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's just gonna keep ramping up. We got lots of videos planned. And uh, thanks for following along. Mm -hmm.